I have a philosophical question for you. I have to ask you. Please. It's, it's in my nature. Yes. Bernard Carr is famous for saying, if you don't want God, then you better have the multiverse. Okay. I'm going to put the multiverse theory on one side. I'm also going to add Roger Penrose's confirmal cyclic cosmological theory on the yeah, same right. side. Yes. Both implying that there's a cycle to the universe. There's an infinite loop of sorts that the Big Bang wasn't the starting point. It was just a fluctuation, like you mentioned, within that infinite loop. And on the other side, I'm going to put the Big Bang was a point of saying that the cosmological arrow of time starts at that point and there's nothing before it. This also leaves the door open for a creator. Mm -hmm. So you have an infinite loop on one side and you have nothingness before the Big Bang or maybe even a creator on the other side. Which theory do you fear more? Which one do I fear more? Yeah. Well, first of all, I, I don't see why the creator has to be only on one side. Maybe the creator created an infinite loop. After all, you know, if there's a creator... So then this would be a subset of this. Like there is an initial singularity, the creator created the infinite loop, and then that's it. Yeah, I mean, you know, if there's an all-powerful being, it can do whatever it wants. Maybe it can create things that existed for all time because it exists outside of time itself. Who knows, right? I mean, that's... So I, I don't really, I mean, people actually, yeah, people didn't like the Big Bang originally because they thought that way. They thought, well, this means that uh, there had to have been a moment of creation and that sounded religious. So a lot of scientists didn't like it for that reason. Right. The term Big Bang was coined to make fun of the idea. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you're right that that's the way some people think. I never really saw it that way. I, I, I think, well, first of all, you know, I, I think if all the creator did was cause the Big Bang to happen, that's a pretty mild form of religion. I mean, it's, it's a really taking it outside the realm of anything that can affect us in, in, in everyday life. I mean, if the creator just sort of started the thing going, okay, you know, fine. It, it doesn't really, um, it's not a very uh, specific belief. But again, I don't see why the creator couldn't have created a static universe or an infinite cyclic universe or whatever. So I don't, I don't really think that plays much of a role, at least not in my thinking. So I don't fear either of these. I think cyclic, infinite cyclic universes do trouble me, you know, for, for physics reasons. Mm -hmm. Namely, uh, there's no such thing as perpetual motion. That's one of the laws of physics that we've learned the hard way over centuries. Yeah. Whenever someone patents a perpetual motion machine, don't buy stock in their company because they're, it's not going to work. Yeah. Um, there are laws of thermodynamics. Those are called laws because they really seem to apply universally. So a cyclic universe that goes on forever is a perpetual motion machine. Um, now, obviously, the things that we've learned from steam engines and, and you know heat pumps and so on, those laws of physics might not apply to the whole universe. So maybe you can have it. But uh, I haven't really seen a proposal which actually addresses um, that problem including Penrose's. Penrose's has a lot of missing pieces in it, but uh, complicated rules of physics or complicated things like the universe that contain a lot of stuff which can produce entropy. Stars burning produces entropy. Gravitational collapse produces entropy. All these things obey the laws of thermodynamics. How is that going to reassemble itself and go through a cycle that would entail entropy decreasing? It's just not, it's not plausible, I don't think. So the cyclic bothers me more than the Big Bang, because yeah. at least for the Big Bang, as you said, you could start the era of time from that moment. For whatever reason, you have low entropy then. It's not really an explanation, but at least it doesn't pose an extra problem like the way the yeah. cyclic cosmologies do. So I, I guess I fear the cyclic cosmologies more in that sense. Yeah. Um, and interestingly, you put the creator on both sides. So what probability would you assign to a creator? What would be your Bayesian prior? Because earlier we spoke about supersymmetry as well. We spoke about these particles and how some of them have this antithetical particle to it. There's a lot of inherent beauty in, in particle physics, which brings rise to the design argument and also the possibility of the creator. So what probability would you assign to there being a creator? Epsilon, where epsilon is less than any positive <laughs> real number. Um, I mean, I, I like to think about it like this. Imagine two universes, one where there's a creator and one where there isn't. Okay. okay if, if you can imagine that. Uh, one where there's a god and one where there isn't. I, and in both of them, human beings evolve and look up at the sky and wonder where they came from. I'm pretty sure that in both of those worlds, human beings would worship some sort of creator. Because I think that psychologically, that's very comforting. And it's kind of logical as well in the sense that, you know, we're born, we have all powerful beings, namely our parents who know everything and provide everything for us and love us and are kind to us. Then we grow up and we realize they're actually fallible and getting old and um, it's very natural to to imagine that there's another level beyond that, which is not so different, that there's some sort of parent figure living in the sky that created us. I think that's a, 
it's a very, um, to me, natural belief for people to, to come up with, irrespective of whether it's true. So the fact that there are religions in the world, to me, is not evidence at all, one way or the other, that there's a creator. Um, so the possible existence of a creator is a hypothesis for which we don't really have evidence for or against. There are many other hypotheses that we also don't have evidence for or against. So looking at it in that sort of rather cold way, I don't see any, yeah, I just, why would I believe that more than any other choice? Right? So people talk about the, what, the flying spaghetti monster or something, you know, you come up with some crazy thing, but that might be true. Yeah. We have no evidence for or against it because yeah. it's off somewhere where we can't see it. So, okay. Um, I mean, with that said, I have no problem with religion at all. I think it's a perfectly uh, uh, reasonable, it's a fine thing. There's a lot of great traditions associated with it, but I personally don't uh, don't give much credence to it. 